Just ahead, we hit the road looking for some of Missouri's finest food destinations. Most restaurants are not remotely as from scratch as we are. It's well worth a drive to Justice Drugstore in Smithville, where the food is called country cooking on steroids. In Springfield, you say chili and everyone points to Casper's, serving up burgers and chili for more than 100 years. It's a little bit of Quonset Hut heaven with a funky feel. We didn't invent barbecue here in Kansas City, but we perfected it. Barbecue joints are a dime a dozen in Kansas City, but we found one tucked away in a gas station that's the real deal in a city many call the barbecue capital of the world. So pull up a chair. We're about to serve up some of the Show Me State's best food destinations. And welcome to Food Destinations. The first question you ask when you're out of town is, where's the best place to eat, right? Our goal is to avoid fast foods, restaurant chains, and help you find the hometown favorites that all the locals know about. So we packed our bags and traveled across Missouri, and we found some hidden gems that will satisfy any appetite. We also ran across some interesting stories along the way. I can't think of anything more Springfield tradition than Casper's. Little Quonson Hut, if you want chili, you come to Casper's. It has its own little feeling of happiness here. Well, it started in 1909, and there's a man named Casper Letterer, and uh, he started it. In 1966, his son, who was an artist, uh, had traveled all over and came back to visit him. Casper asked him if he would work in the restaurant a couple of weeks. I started working at Casper's when I was 28, and I bought it after Charles passed away in 85. Really, I'm not responsible for the decor. Charles, he, the artist, he started doing stuff to it uh, after his father passed. I have the best customers in the world, bar none, from the most wealthy of Springfield to what we'll call not so wealthy. It's just an eclectic bunch, kind of like the eclectic stuff in here. A woman that was employed with Casper, uh, the original Casper, 46 years she's been with Casper's, and uh, she, she retired last year. She still comes in about twice a week. Why? Because the secret, the chili recipe secret, and she uh, doesn't want anybody to know it. She doesn't want me to tell anybody, so she said, I better come in at least two or three days a week and make up the chili seasonings. The chili, it's not, it's not real hot. and doesn't have a lot of beans in it. It's pretty meaty. I think it's more than just the fact that the chili's good. We also have really good burgers. We don't have hot dog buns. If you get a hot dog, it's gonna be on a hamburger bun. We have, we buy hams, really good hams, and we steam them like five or six hours on top of the stove, get them to a rolling boil, and then, and we just let them steam till it almost falls off the bone. And then we cut our ham sandwiches up off the bone. We're not open June, July, and August. It's hot in here, and I get cranky when I'm hot. <laughs> 10.30 in the morning till four o'clock in the afternoon, Monday through Friday only. Uh, I used to stay open years ago till seven, but you know what? There's more to life than just working all the time. Be kind to people, be sweet to people, make them want to come back in here, not just for the food, but because they've been treated well. I'm the chili queen. You know, I have Caspers. So what more could I want to be? And what more fun could I have ever had than this right here? From chili and crackers to shrimp and grits, we found a great little place in the heart of St. Louis's Central West End neighborhood. Surrounded by eclectic shopping and great nightlife, Scape is the city's hidden down-home bistro with a little surprise around back. I'm Eric Kelly chef and Scape Bistro here in the Central West Inn. I'd like to welcome you guys all to my uh, beautiful restaurant. 
If you come in through the front doors and you look up and see the chandelier, all those glass spheres, if you're ever curious of how many are there, there's 800 of them. So we're an American bistro. Uh, a lot of the menu items are influenced from different countries from around the world. So you can come here to the restaurant, you can get a little bit of Italian, get a little bit of French, you can get a little bit of an American, uh, a little Asian. We have a very innovative beverage program with some really cool specialty cocktails. The drink that's really catching on, the four berry mojito. We take strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, muddle them up uh, with some fresh mint, pour a nice rum over top of it, and uh, sweeten it up with a little touch of sugar. And there you have it, folks, our four berry mojito. If I'm gonna go to Skate Bistro, I'm gonna go there because I wanna get the shrimp and grits. Shrimp and grits, I'm not gonna lie, that sounds like a pretty odd combination. So we make our grits and we just fortify them and fatten them up with some beautiful uh, uh, cheddar cheese from Oregon. So it's a creamy cheddar grit. And on top of the grits, we just serve some giant uh, sauteed and uh, uh, dry barbecue rubbed shrimp. And they're just out of this world. So I think that the reason to come to Skate would be for the overall experience. But uh, if there was one thing more than the other, I would say that uh, the food here uh, is uh, really going to make people feel great. We're just getting started. We've got more great Missouri food destinations coming up. I often have people come in and they look at the menu. I know their instant reaction is to bolt because my menu is not like other menus. Just ahead, meet a Missouri chef who is on the cutting edge of fine dining with his made fresh from scratch philosophy. Plus, who doesn't love good chocolate? We'll take you to a shop in Springfield that goes from cocoa bean to chocolate bar, all under one roof. channel we're known for our culinary trend reports and one of the hottest trends we found last year was farm to table of course that's where chefs look for locally sourced food to serve in their restaurants but some chefs are taking this a step further and utilizing the ancient approach of nose to tail everything in between no part of the animal is wasted now don't knock it until you've tried it especially if you find yourself in Smithville Missouri just north of Kansas City Trust me, this is one divine food destination. Hi, I'm Jonathan Justice. I'm the executive chef of Justice Drugstore in Smithville, Missouri. This property has been in my family for 173 years. It was a fully functioning pharmacy up until we took it over uh, to do this restaurant. Camille and I started developing our ideas on what we thought the restaurant should be, and, and we designed everything here ourselves. We thought that the lines of the building lent itself to a modern space of clean lines. I've had people say that it's like coming off the street of a small downtown and stepping into Manhattan, although I do think it has more of a California feel than, a, than an East Coast feel. The food that I do, I, when we first started, I called it Oat Midwestern. Um, I've kind of settled into calling it country food on steroids. I always wondered why someone wasn't distinctly trying to do a food that was about here. It was something much more personal. Farm to table is at the core of what we're doing. Most restaurants are not remotely as from scratch as we are, but it doesn't mean that we can't build flavors and it doesn't mean that we can't do food that is interesting and different. We make almost all of our own vinegars now. Uh, we buy mostly whole animals. We render our own fats. We do a lot of wild foods. Um, we are growing a lot of wild foods on our own property now, bringing them into modern cultivation. When you're using products from here, you can't help but do the food that's about here. With our farmers, we're not using commodity product. We're using products that people work very, very hard to, um, to raise and to grow. The other part of nose to tail is that if you're going to ask an animal, and not even ask, demand that an animal give its life, it's important to me that respect that life. You use as much as you can, you waste as little as possible. 
respect our staff, respect our equipment, respect the animals we work with and the farmers that we're working with and all of the land that's connected to those. And that, I think, is at the heart of what we're doing. Like our kitchen, in our bar, we, we do everything from scratch. We knew from the beginning that we wanted to have a bar that was about um, fresh ingredients and local ingredients. We make our own vermouths. We make uh, oh, over 100 types of bitters, shrubs, and tinctures. The bar does have kind of an apothecary feel to it when you come in. There are lots of jars with, with uh, odd-looking things steeping in them. Cooking does not exist without chemistry. I start thinking about how I can build flavor bridges and, and connect flavors that make sense. This is not about rushing through a meal for fuel. This is about spending time and conversation and savoring the food and really paying attention to what you're eating. I want people to have an open mind come in to let us take them on this culinary journey. And I hope that they come away with something, a new perspective, and uh, having had something fun and delicious and not quite like anything they've ever had before. Chocolate is very big on the Food Channel trend list. As a matter of fact, chocolate gets its own top 10 category. Now, artisan chocolates are very big right now, not only in stores and online, but at home. Some people are sort of going with really far out flavors that they're trying themselves. But if you find a chocolate that you really like, you know its origin, and you feel good about the business behind it, why would you make it yourself? The business is Askinosi Chocolate, and my name is Sean Askinosi. Well, I was a criminal defense lawyer, and I did that for about 20 years. And uh, I was just looking for a change in my career. I didn't know how to do anything else besides uh, the courtroom. Uh, and I started grilling, and then from baking to chocolate desserts. And then um, it just kind of came to me to make chocolate from scratch. We import all the cocoa beans to make the chocolate, and we direct trade with farmers around the world. We profit share with these farmers. We open our books to them. We source our cocoa beans in Ecuador, Honduras, Tanzania, and the Philippines. And we can literally trace every single chocolate bar that we make back to the farmers that we buy from. That's very unusual in the chocolate world. The chocolate that we started with was just the single origin dark chocolate, and that's really our hallmark, if you will. And then we started making white chocolate, and we've become kind of uh, noted for the white chocolate because we're one of the only people, if not the only, small batch chocolate makers in the United States making white chocolate. What makes it distinct is the fact that we press our own cocoa butter. Then we also have a new line within the last year or so called our collaboration line, and those are with um, artisan food friends of ours that we've collaborated with to make chocolate bars. Our first one was a licorice bar. We have a coffee bar. We have a milkshake bar. And then most recently, we have a chili bar that we developed in collaboration with a restaurant in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And we also make chocolate hazelnut spread from scratch, kind of like Nutella, but not really. In fact, we're the only people in the U.S. making that from scratch. There's a great deal of reward in making a product and seeing it go out the door and that people enjoy. I hope that they get that it's extremely high quality premium chocolate and they understand how we treat farmers and how we treat those, uh, the people in those communities where we buy cocoa beans. I hope people love the chocolate, but that they also love our story. Still to come. Our customers are a very uh, specific group. It's people that like pizza. We head for Central Missouri to check out a pizza place that refuses to take things too seriously, making it a fan favorite with local college students, both past and present. And from American apple to minced meat, we found a wonderful neighborhood pie place that serves up Midwestern hospitality, along with its huge helpings. It's all next on Food Destinations.
my book, there's no better dessert than a delicious homemade pie. So when we ran across a little pie shop just off the beaten path in Rolla, Missouri, we had to stop and give it a try. It's a place where no one's a stranger and the pies are fresh baked every day. My name is Ron Hobson and along with my wife, Mickey, we started this shop and it's called A Slice of Pie. But when we first opened up, we didn't know what we were doing. Our, our food experience was we'd like to eat. We opened up November the 8th, 1986, so we're into our 27th year. We're located right at the busiest intersection in downtown Raleigh, catty cornered from the Kroger store. And it's, it's sort of hard to find, but you know, if you have a quality product, people will find you, and we think that we do have a quality product. We probably go through 50 whole pies a day. They're all homemade and they're all made from scratch. And our biggest seller is our American apple pie with a homemade cream cinnamon sauce that we, we drizzle over the top. Another big seller for us is Toll House. And Toll House is like a big Toll House cookie. It's got chocolate chips and pecans in it and comes with real whipped cream on top. And people ask me all the time if our recipes are, are secret. And I said, well, they sure are. And I said, we got the recipe for the uh, Toll House pie off of a package of Toll House chocolate chips down at Kroger. So if you want to know about our secrets, just go down to Kroger and start reading. <laughs> we're open 10 to 10 every day. Now, the only two days that we're completely closed are Christmas and New Year's Day. People ask me all the time, what, what do you really like about it? And I tell you, what I really like about it is the people that come into the pie shop. Everybody has a story, and they want to tell you their life story. Mick and I work hard, we've always worked hard, and we appreciate everybody that comes in. And we try to get along with everybody. We don't care what religion, what, what you do, you know, just, just come in and have an enjoyable time and, uh, and, and have, hope you have an enjoyable experience. And then she will tell everybody else, see, that's, that's, that's our goal. From slice of pie to pizza pie, ask any Mizzou graduate where to get the best pizza in Columbia, and they'll no doubt tell you Shakespeare's. It's a gotta have for many, but I bet you they don't know the legend behind the pizza joint. Pizza and beer in a college campus can't go wrong. We're right in the middle of a very vibrant downtown area, and then right across the street is the campus, and we're right in between the two. Some other fella opened it in 1973. Something happened, uh, something with a racetrack or some kind of late night deal or something like that, and the guy that owns it now uh, J. Lewis walked into a bar for a beer and walked out owning Shakespeare's Pizza. Pizza now ready for Tony. The recipe came with the restaurant. Other than what we put in the sauce, um, I can't talk about that, but um, the, the, it's fresh stuff. It's the good stuff of whatever it is. The meats are very lean, very, um, uh, they, they have good spices in them. The dough we make continually on site, so it's only a few hours old. Um, the cheese is a real high quality, which means high butter fat, real high quality cheese. So all the parts that go in are, are the best of what you can find. And then we use the stone hearth base oven, which impart a very crackly French bready, unique kind of texture to the crust. Pizza is the big thing on the menu. Then we have about 30 toppings, and you can order them in any combination you want. One thing to note is that we don't put less of each topping on the more you order. If you order pepperoni, you get 28 pepperonis on a large, whether you order a whole bunch of toppings or just pepperoni. There's the masterpiece, which has a whole bunch of popular toppings on it, sort of the deluxe pizza. There were some girls from Tarkio, a small town in northern Missouri, and they had this one particular one, I think it was pepper cheese and some meats and some things. And they told us this really fun story about how they would come to Shakespeare's after this one class at the end of the week and eat this pizza so we put that on the menu, the Tarkio Farm Girl Special. And now people order that all the time. There's a cardiologist in town who came up with a grouping of toppings that's very heart healthy. They're really low on fat. And so we called it the Dr. Tom Special. We're open for lunch and then dinner, and we stay open past dinner later on the weekends. Uh, our bar is open until the state makes us close it. I'd say the atmosphere is just, it's genuine. It's not fake. There's nothing choreographed by the home office in Scottsdale. We're very serious about that pizza and that recipe. If you want to come down and have a great pizza and enjoy things in a really relaxed atmosphere, come on down. Still ahead. People come in here for, for their gas, for their coffee, for their, for their donut in the morning, and they become our customers uh, for lunch and for dinner. 
From the pump to the pit, you can fill up your stomach and top off your tank at this unique barbecue joint. Don't go away. Food Destinations will be right back. barbecue without thinking Kansas City, or at least we haven't been able to stop thinking about our final food destination. Just south of KC sits Oklahoma Joe's. On the outside, it's a gas station. On the inside, it offers some of the best in brisket, ribs, and burnt ends. We're at the corner of uh, 47th and Mission in Kansas City, Kansas, which we'd like to say is the most delicious corner in the metropolitan area. We're a barbecue joint and a gas station and convenience store, and it's uh, pretty unique. Oklahoma Joe's started in 1996, right here in this location. Jeff and Joy Staney, our owners, got their start in barbecue by competing in barbecue contests around the country. And when they started their restaurant, they made a commitment to one another that they would serve competition quality barbecue every day. Everything is slow smoked uh, over Missouri white oak. We serve uh, brisket, slice it thin. We make burn ends from the brisket tops. We serve those three times a week. Our brisket is really, I think, the best thing on our menu. But our pulled pork is our, is our house specialty and uh, we've really kind of made our reputation on the strength of our pulled pork. We pull our pork the Carolina way. Uh, we don't chop it, but we, you know, we separate it out, pull it gently, and, uh, and serve it that way. We were one of the first in the Kansas City area to do that, by the way. We're still very much a neighborhood joint, even though we've become a genuine tourist destination for, uh, for, for people literally around the world, whether they're from Kansas City or whether they're visitors from out of town. I just hope that people feel as if they've had a taste, no pun intended, of, of, of Kansas City's 100 plus year old tradition of, of barbecue. Well, there you have our food destinations. We hope we've appealed to your appetites and convinced you to try some of our finds. Food is meant to be enjoyed, and there's nothing better than finding that restaurant that makes you want to hop in the car and make a special trip for a memorable meal. Those are true food destinations.